Thank you very much for um, for the kind invitation, for the kind introduction. Dear Professor Novikov, dear Sergei, um, of course, I would be uh, much more happier if I could uh, attend this wonderful event in St. Petersburg, but it is uh, due to the pandemic, unfortunately, not possible. So we do our best in this online modus. So my topic today would be to present to you the HDR brachytherapy uh, method in prostate cancer. I would like to start with um, um, uh, the, to, by reviewing the uh, literature according uh, dose escalation. Um, and here on this slide, you see the uh, main or the four randomized trials performed um, in uh, prostate cancer by adding about 10% uh, of those to the, uh, at that time, uh, called uh, conventional radiation up to 70 gray. And you see here that uh, this 10% uh, dose ended in a benefit of biochemical control of about 10-12% uh, in all trials. Um, it was a, a small price to pay um, um, uh, in terms of uh, more toxicity, added toxicity, uh, higher grade, uh, as you can see here. Um, and um, but uh, we can consider also to, um, a technical development from the first trial performed uh, in MD Anderson uh, to the proton trial. As you can see here, the um, five years results uh, um, in terms of biochemical control became better. Um, we have learned from these trials as well to deal with high doses and uh, to uh, avoid, to try to avoid toxicity, higher graded toxicity. One of the examples is the um, uh, V70 of rectum. So the dose um, irradiated with 70 gray or higher. Uh, and you see, you see here that uh, best uh, it would be to keep that V70 um, below 20% or best below 10%. Um, and when we talk about um, hyperfractionation, we could uh, say that the, this V70 is in EQD2, alpha, beta 3, 58 grade. So keep that please in mind. Um, uh, also, we could see in all these uh, trials that the advantage of dose escalation was valid for all uh, sub-risk uh, groups, uh, although the higher the risk, the more pronounced uh, was this effect. But as you can see here, as an example from the Delaney um, study, um, also the uh, uh, low-risk patients did benefit. We have also three randomized trials um, in this, after this period of escalation uh, using uh, HD or brachytherapy, interstitial brachytherapy for further dose escalation. And as you can see here, there is also a clear benefit uh, to the combo uh, external beam plus um, brachytherapy versus external beam alone. And here also we see a technical development from the older Satya trial over her skin uh, to the Ascender RT trial. And when we look um, more in detail to the um, Peter Hoskin trial uh, published in Green Journal, we see that, yes, from the today perspective, um, there was a bit of underdose in both arms because today we would uh, hyperfractionate with uh, 20 fractions of 3 gray or 3.1 gray and not 2.75, but this was true for, the, for both arms. So the result in favor of uh, those further dose escalation with HDR brachytherapy is, uh, is, is uh, clear and um, it's valid. And the last trial, the most modern one, is very valuable because the comparator was a very modern external beam radiotherapy using IMRT up to the dose of 78, so to what we could uh, call it um, uh, dose escalated radiotherapy. And still, you see here there's a striking difference between the two arms um, by adding bracket therapy. So, 
after this uh, reviewing uh, of, of, of this uh, important uh, level one evidence, we could state that um, those escalation is required. Uh, and this is uh, true in all risk strata, also in low risk, uh, to a minimum equity two dose of about 80 gray, 78 to 80 gray. Interstitial brachytherapy boost is superior in level one evidence um, versus external beam alone. However, all these trials were associated when higher dose was given with an increased risk of higher graded side effects. In this regard, photons were inferior to protons. This was the only uh, difference we could see. So from the today point of view, um, when dealing with high dose uh, for prostate cancer, we should take uh, special attention or focus on these three marked regions uh, on, this, um, uh, on this picture. You see here the base of the urethra, the apex of the urethra, and the dorsal from the prostate uh, ventral rectal wall. So one uh, possibility is to um, a use urethral uh, delineation that would be possible, for example, by using uh, T2 weighted MRI, especially in sagittal view, uh, to the CT planning. Um, and even better than that, if we go to SPRT or uh, to HP, HDR brachytherapy alone to use, of course, catheters, uh, which make uh, urethra much better visible. And to use, of course, those is rather no, no hotspots. To the use of rectal spaces, I will come later. So for the apex, there are a, a, a series of uh, literature reports showing that increase dose per fraction, but increase dose in total in this region uh, that might uh, cause uh, strictures in this uh, bulbon mammals urethra. Uh, is of course problems uh, avoiding. In the um, um, base of the urethra, um, increased uh, dose would lead in increased incidence of long term cystitis uh, and fibrosis uh, with um, consequent problems. But in the mid gland urethra, we see an increased res radio resistance. Um, this is what we have learned without showing new uh, uh, many, many reports which are existent, but uh, because of time limits, um, we learned that in the midland uretra, we really can give models. And this is possibly uh, uh, due to the different anatomy of the uretra. As you can see, the prostatic uretra is lined with a transitional epithelium. So that means to avoid uh, GI and GU toxicity, especially gastrointestinal, is the meaningful issue here in high dose radiation and the technology used is meaningful. So I come back to the rectal spaces, which can be easily uh, performed by uh, an injection, um, uh, placing a needle between the denovia fascia and the rectal wall, then uh, do a hydro dissection and then in, uh, inject the two um, fluid um, compounds of the hydrogel which become uh, together a pillow after 10 seconds, a pillow of about, uh, when performed well, of about 10 millimeters um, in this region. I show you now two opposite cases uh, to show you uh, the advantage of this uh, technology. So on the left hand side, you see I, what I would say um, a worst case scenario. So external beam radiation alone, no spacer with a deal, uh, a, a dominant intraprostatic lesion, uh, you see here in uh, dark red, uh, close to the dorsal aspect of the prostate. And of course, we add here from the CTV, which is the prostate um, itself, a margin of six to four millimeter to form the PTV. And this um, uh, incorporates the ventral rectal wall. On the right hand side, you see here the ideal situation. So no need uh, to enlarge the CTV to the PTV because uh, bracket therapy is used and the spacer in between the prostate and uh, rectum, which allows a very nice fall off of the dose. 
And I would like to show you uh, these typical cases um, in what I do also in particle therapy, just to show you the impact of it. Um, with protons, you give uh, a case uh, uh, who, uh, who I treated a patient who I treated in the first lockdown last year with uh, no possibility to do, uh, unfortunately, to do the spacer. And um, if you remember, V70 was important. We could uh, um, see the um, prescription dose was here, 20 fractions of 3.1 gray, one gray. So the V70 is in equity 258 gray, and it was 3%. Was acceptable, no, no, no problem. The near max dose in rectum was 59 gray, was so acceptable. And the coverage of the PTV2, which is the prostate itself, is uh, so D98 was quite good. So you can see here. However, we have to manage to uh, lower the uh, dose in the ventral rectal hole. We had to uh, accept uh, less coverage in the PTV in this region, as you can see here very well. Uh, a sim very similar case, almost identical. Um, after the first pandemic wave, or we can use in last summer again uh, a spacer. You see here that uh, in the same prescription dose, V70 or uh, AQD 258 was 0%. Near, near, near max dose uh, was 29%, the half of, of what we had before. And the uh, coverage is much better. And you see here the the decay of or the follow of uh, the steep follow up of the um, of the protons are in the spacer, and this is also true for brachytherapy, very similar. So, what can create brachytherapy even better than, for example, particles or um, high end um, photons, uh, SBRT? In in brachytherapy, we treat the uh, the CTV only, so we don't need a safety margin, as already said, uh, or just a minimal safety margin in three, three tumors, so uh, the CTV is equal PTV. The irradiated volumes outside of target are almost zero, and the ALARA principle can be uh, very well achieved, best achieved in the comparison of all techniques. Uh, with the consequence of better sparing of organs at risk, lower secondary cancer risk, small risk of acute and chronic toxicity, and especially ideal solution from the moving target problem, which you can visualize here. So this is what happens every day when we treat with external. Um, we have a moving target, yes, prostate and seminal vesicles in red and blue, but we have also a different shape and organ deformation, and this is very difficult to deal with. Um, here you can see it in the PMI view from, from the side. And of course, the cause of it is a different volume of bladder and rectum, especially of um, The ideal situation is by to use uh, interstitial bracket therapy with the needles you are in the uh, prostate and the prostate, if it prostate is moving, moving, is moving with the uh, applicators. And you visualize that by real-time um, 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 ultrasound, transrectal. And yes, as, as Sergei said and mentioned, we were the first clinic in Kiel to implement or to develop and implement this uh, technique in, back in the 1986. In the same year, University of Munich has developed a similar um, technology, but failed to implement it. We did it, we implemented and you, you see here what wa was our uh, uh, strategy to implant, implant, implant at that time eight needles in the peripheral zone um, only, uh, the so-called kill geometry system, which we actually maintain for a long time. And uh, we managed in, please uh, remember, it was in the 1980s, yeah, where cobalt was actually the comparator. We managed to achieve uh, doses of over 80 gray in the CTV2, which was the full prostate, and in the peripheral zone of McNeil of 127 gray, uh, according to AQD2 alpha beta 3. So we have published as first clinic in the world in 2002 in Red Journal our 10 years results. And this paper, um, I'll come back to it, is now um, one of the most 100 cited in the uh, entire literature. 
Um, we have also uh, performed a very interesting um, uh, trial um, by pooling the data with a group of Alvaro Martinez in, uh, in, in the late 90s. Um, uh, um, uh, we analyzed uh, 579 men with higher um, risk and from this a cohort of hormone naive men with higher risk of 324 and we could show that a further dose escalation was what we call would call uh, those um, 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 a second level of dose escalation higher than 94 gray resulted in better biochemical control at five years um, 60 percent versus 85 percent and this striking dose escalation effect was even better in the uh, groups of patients with higher risk, with two or three prognosis factors. So this is this um, first publication at uh, 10 years, with a eight, uh, eight year follow up. You see here that the results were quite good, 73% of biochemical control in high risk, uh, T3 stages with, uh, with very good 91% local control and the, uh, um, we had 2.3% uh, higher graded toxicity for G, uh, GI and um, for GU and 4.1% for uh, GI. Please keep that in mind. Um, we also have published uh, 15 years results of uh, one of the, I think the only clinic worldwide with uh, extended follow-up period of 22 years. Uh, uh, confirming this uh, very good biochemical control of five years of 81% and uh, 10 years of 74%. And also we have published recently in uh, general bracket therapy in 2019, extended results of uh, 459 patients with high risk. As you can see here, with a discovery of an early predictor of biochemical control, which was the PSA nadir in 18 months, if this was uh, lower than 0 0.5, we could reach a five-year biochemical control of 89%, uh, which is, I think, very, very high and still a reference. If not, it was um, a bit lower, but um, you see here in the graph. 10 years, it was 78.6%. So um, a new era was the discovery of uh, or the introduction um, by the um, group of uh, Offenbach, uh, Professor Zambuglu and Professor Baltas and the Nucleotron company in uh, early 2000, um, uh, the introduction of the real-time adaptive bracket therapy, as you can see with the possibility to uh, give a higher boost or the SEEP without uh, having more dose in, in the organs at risk. Um, we introduced that and we could show uh, a 10 years also a difference of uh, almost 20% between the pre-planned bracket therapy and the adaptive 4D bracket therapy in high risk um, patients. And now I would like to short, uh, show you um, latest results of a high risk uh, population with a combination of VMAT whole pelvis plus two fractions of uh, nine gray um, HDR brachy with a SIP of 15 gray in So here you see the volumetry and the um, uh, uh, target what is definition, the first virtual plan calculation, then the implantation according to this virtual plan, the uh, re-imaging with a 3D model of the implantation, the calculation of the final life plan with a very nice dose the DVH, as you can see here, very low um, dose for urethra in yellow, in blue, and light blue in um, bladder neck and rectal, uh, uh, rectal uh, situation, very low doses and high doses in the prostate in red and in pink, very high doses in the deal. These were the dose limits we have used. And these are the two years results so, uh, so far. 95% astro control, 93.6% finis control. You see here the uh, very steep drop of PSA in almost all, all patients to this uh, nadir PSA um, zero, lower than 0 
almost no toxicity and can specific specific survival was 99 percent it was a high risk cohort of 38 percent high risk and 23 percent of uh, high intermediate risk with a mean EPSA, EPSA for, of 28 nanogram per milliliter. Hormonal deprivation in 23% of patients only. We had very low procedural toxicity for the SPESA, very low toxicity profile for GI, you see here at acute, six months, 12 months, 12 months. And the same was true for GU. When comparing with our um, um, historical data, we had a gain of absolute minus 3.2% in GI and minus 1.4% in GU, and no E3 at two years. Our good experience could be actually repeated by uh, Australia Singapore group in 97 patients, published in 2019, a very good, um, um, you see here, very good diminishing of those in all uh, level of those in the rectum. And we have also a level on evidence for SPESA in um, USA in uh, an American trial showing a better uh, GI toxicity uh, at 79 gray uh, plus with the SPESA. These are the publications important. So I would like to um, stop here and uh, thank you for the invitation once again and of course we can discuss my talk i hope uh, that next time we can see uh, face to face uh, somewhere in the world of course best in st petersburg thank you very much <laughs>